G'day ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed that I have been missing for the past two weeks. I, for the first time since I started YouTube, took two weeks off. For the past like four years, I've been uploading videos every single week, but I took two weeks off, and there's a very good reason why. The littlest Buttsman has been born. My firstborn son, Atticus, was born on the 2nd of April, um, and Claire, my wife, did just, she blew me away. I, I, absolutely unbelievable what an incredible woman um, and the little man himself is is doing very very well uh, it was two weeks ago or almost three weeks ago now and uh, I tell you uh, I forgot what it's like to sleep but uh, other than that just gorgeous I'm so in love with both of them it's it's beautiful which brings me to this topic for this video Bluey yes the very offensive cartoon for children, Bluey, has come under fire. The iconic TV show out of Australia that has really taken the world by storm, uh, Bluey has really been absolutely smashed by the incredible evil empire of the newspaper world that is the Daily Mail. They've decided to go out and create articles about how bad Bluey is. Why? Because several people, like three or four, uh, complained about a certain episode. And that's all it takes for the Daily Mail to really get fired up. Just a couple of people to be upset on social media. And who would have thought people got upset on social media? That's never happened before, has it? Furious parents switch off gross and fat phobic Bluey episode. So if it's so gross and fat phobic, I can only imagine in this Bluey episode, Bluey and his dad turn up at a fat activists house or a body positivity movement fucking residence and they go in and they they poke fun at them and poke their little folds and throw away their diabetes medication maybe they shrink their giant underpants in the dryer or perhaps they leave the fridge door open to spoil some of their delicious snacks i don't know what bluey has done here but i imagine it's pretty fucking bad diehard bluey fans have been left very disappointed by the like three or four of them by the toxic messaging in a recent episode about exercise. Ooh, touchy subject, yeah. With some claiming, three or four people, they had to switch off the show. They had to switch it off. Imagine being such a weak piece of shit that you have to turn off a children's cartoon because it's about exercise. Like, fucking have a go, mate. Have a fucking go. The episode begins with Bandit and Chili hopping on the bathroom scales before sighing, oh man, after seeing the number flash up on the screen. Bandit, the father figure in the iconic children's show, then goes on to grab his stomach before deciding he needs to get out and exercise. Okay, so he's come to the realization that a lot of people should come to that they need to get out and do some fucking exercise. It's a life decision that a lot of the fat mums who've complained about this show, and I am assuming they're all fat mums because fat dads wouldn't give a shit. They're just happy their kids aren't fucking annoying them. I'm just gonna say that it's a decision that a lot of fat mums should make. Get out and move around a little. It could have been such a wonderful episode about not letting your kids hold you back from moving your body, but instead, it just seems like a story about Bandit's weight loss and the assumption he had high blood pressure when he was fat. One fat mum fumed. I mean, we'll never know the cause of his higher blood pressure, particularly because I'm not well rounded in blood pressure of blue healers. He's a fucking dog at the end of the day. But if he is overweight, then maybe his high blood pressure had something to do with the fact that he's over fucking weight, mate. Adding, with one in five children around the world showing signs of disordered eating, I really expected more. Did ya? You expected more from a children's cartoon? Wow. On top of that, one in four kids in Australia are obese and it's pretty much the same around the globe. So, what are you more worried about? Disordered eating or kids being obese? Remembering disordered eating isn't just anorexia or bulimia, those type of things. A symptom of disordered eating is actually having a diet or being on a diet or sticking to a diet. So let's all just chill the fuck out about that. What this does do is allow the pro-fat people all over the world to push the blame onto someone else. So whose fault is it if you are fat? Who is to blame? Well, according to a expert, a leading expert, it's not your fault if you're obese or seriously overweight. A leading international expert in obesity has revealed, mm, obesity expert. Imagine being an obesity expert. We look under the folds where no man has been before. John Dixon debunks huge weight loss myth. Yes, this is exactly 
what the body positivity and fat positivity movement needs. More excuses. Now, John does go on to say that it's not entirely your fault if, you, uh, if you're overweight and you're an adult. Because he believes that your adult weight is often established by the time that you're three years old. And as a 106 or 7 kilo man, I'd just like to say that's one big fucking baby. What your mother eats or if she smokes during her pregnancy or the foods you eat as a child, among other things, play a role in driving the tendency to obesity. Meaning it's time to reframe the issue, Professor Dixon explained. Okay, sure, you may be predisposed to eating too much or eating the wrong diet, but isn't the onus on you as an adult not to do those things? I understand where he's coming from, but at some point, someone has to take the fucking blame. People love the path of least resistance. They just love giving up. But also, is this all fat people we're talking about? All obese people? I don't think it is. And thankfully, on YouTube, there are lots of videos of people asking these exact questions to some obese folk. So let's check out one right fucking now. This is from Jubilee in their video, Who's the Fat Fuck? Okay, not to be a dick, but straight off the bat, I'm judging books by their covers. They're rather thick covers. And I think there are gonna be some pretty wild opinions in this video. I am offended by the word fat. Okay, so in this video, the Oompa Loompas, sorry, the contestants, I guess, uh, they respond to questions by saying they strongly disagree, they strongly agree, or they're somewhere in the middle. They then have to defend that answer or explain it. So that is the first question. Are they offended by the word fat? Three, two, one, go. The reason I am here is because I feel like in the past, fat has been such like a- Holy shit, they could have at least turned the fucking air conditioner on. Old Love and the Yellows walk three fucking meters and it looks like she's just run a marathon in Dubai. Like, derogatory term and like, we've been so like ridiculed for the way we look. It's almost like, I want to take that word back and make it a positive thing. Okay, sure. We've seen a lot of different groups of people uh, do that with words. African-American people did that with the N word. Gay people did that with the F word. They made it their word. But is it the same? Are fat people as oppressed as African-American people have been throughout history? Are they? No! Obviously not! A lot of words that should offend me don't. I think it's because I'm just kind of like, I don't even need the word to know your- Mate. What the fuck are you wearing? Can you put your big flappy fucking nipples away, please? Okay, so the consensus from the Oompa Loompas is that fat isn't offensive at all. But in the Instagram poll, this really shows the uh, YouTube audience that the, these people have, uh, it was 50-50 to strongly agree that it is offensive and strongly disagree that it is not offensive. So it just goes to show you the type of humans that watch these videos. Being plus size is a choice. Three, two, one. Yes, of course it is. Of course it is. You decide how much you exercise and what you put in your mouth. These are choices. So yes, it's a fucking choice. All right, we've got uh, three strongly disagree. We've got two disagree and one somewhat agree. Also, what's mad is 72% of the Instagram poll think it's not a choice. That's a strange response. Wow. That's 72% of people who think that they have no choice in the matter whether or not they are obese or not. That's crazy. That's 72% of people who have just given up. Who said it's too hard. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. Fuck. I lost 60 pounds in six months. Everyone was so happy for me. I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated why I did, why I exercise and things like that. And so I made the conscious decision. Okay, you made a conscious decision. Okay, to put the weight back on because you are unhappy with people's response to you. And here's a caveat to this whole conversation is just because you lose weight is not gonna make you a better person. It's not particularly going to change you. That all comes from within. It's not so much what's on the outside, all right? There's a lot you need to change with yourself mentally and that hopefully will come with time. If this is something you've faced for 30, 40 years of your life, it's not just gonna fix itself when you drop some kilos, is it? It may help though, that's what I genuinely believe, but it's not going to fix the problem that's deeply ingrained within yourself, is it? That's a bit of a negative, but being healthy, training hard, working on yourself, trying to better yourself is definitely the right path to be on 
to make yourself a happier person. Get my community, the Korean community, mm. is going to be really disappointed that there's a fat Korean walking around the world. It's not just the Korean community, honey. It's all of us. But it was a choice for me to say, well, I don't want to work out eight hours a day every day and hate what I look like to be skinnier. You definitely don't need to exercise eight hours a day. Start with half an hour and build your way up to an hour. And that's all you need to do all day. And then just eat less calories than you need and you'll drop weight. Simple. I disagree because I believe in society, especially in America, we have this idea that, oh yeah, all fat people ate themselves that way. Uh, they did. Go on. But they don't take into account people who have a disease. They don't take into account people who work out and their body is just... Hang on. Are you puffing? Work out. <sighs> Whilst you're talking? Maybe that's a little bit of a warning sign that you need to sort your shit out, love. And yeah, some people do have diseases. Some people can't work out because of these diseases. But this is that who we're talking about on this show? No, obviously not. That is rare. Considering most people are overweight and not most people are disease ridden, then obviously there is a disparity there. So fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Two thirds of the Western world is not diseased. Well, maybe they are. The disease is obesity. I want to lose weight. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's hard. Okay. <laughs> okay, so most of them want to drop weight, which is wonderful. And honestly, I want them to succeed. These videos aren't about hating fat people. All I hate, all I fucking despise is this message that you don't need to work on yourself. It is wrong, all right? And it's not just about the shape of your body or how much body fat you have. It's everything within your own life. It's your intelligence. It's your vocabulary. It's your humor. It's your body weight. It's everything. You shouldn't just stop. You shouldn't just give up. You should keep working on it to the day that you die. It's like when people stop working after 60 years. They just give up and retire and then they just die a couple of years later because they've given up. Giving up is not good. The path of least resistance is terrible for the human mind. Awful. I'm gonna be here because this is like the work that I do and I feel like doing this is gonna like make, it's like being here someone's gonna say something to me and be like, oh like, like you aren't for body positivity, you aren't for fat activism, you aren't for liberation, but like this, that has nothing to do with anybody else besides me. I think like if I, if I say, if I this and I'm not saying, I'm not being honest with myself. Jesus Christ mate, that speech has burnt more calories than he has in the last 15 fucking years. Get that man some subtitles and a Subway sandwich now. <laughs> okay, so skinny people get more privileges. Now, let me just say this. You don't want to be skinny either. What you want is you want to be strong. That's your goal. And I'm not talking about strong like a bodybuilder or a power lift. I'm talking about relative strength. If you're an old nana, you want to be strong because the chances of you dying go down if you have more leg strength than your average fucking nana. Why? Because it helps you balance and stops you falling over as much, right? So you want to be strong. It's not about being skinny. It's not at all. It's about being fit, healthy and strong. That's it. But if you think there are privileges, please enlighten me as to what you think they are. Since I am a dancer, it is the most annoying thing. Like, I go to auditions and I'm the only, like, plus size person there. Okay, sure. Here's a question. Whose fault's that? The world is created with smaller bodies in mind. Like, mm -hmm. everything we experience, when you sit in a folding chair, when you go on an airplane, when you go to the movie theater. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Again, question, whose fault's that? I had to quit a whole career because of my size. Like, I got my first degree in musical theater performance. I was ready to go to Broadway. And then through college, I gained 65 pounds. And not only did I watch my professors lose interest in me, but I watched casting people lose interest in me. Hello, me again. Whose fault is that? Who is to blame? Every morning I'll wake up and I will like get out of bed and I'll look in the mirror and I will just like, I'll like, I'll like rub like my chest, like rub my stomach, I'll like shake my ass and like touch yes. my thighs. So like, 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 like I want to like shower myself with love every day. Righto, I've come to the conclusion that this group is fucking insane. But I guess we all knew that seeing this group of fat activists come together. We knew something bad was going to happen. 
all to do with gravitational pull or something like that. Loving your body is wonderful. It's great. But if you really love it, you're going to look after it, right? And that doesn't mean not having fun. Drink, eat shit food, do all that stuff. But do it in moderation. Don't do it every day as a part of your natural diet. And please don't buy into these new religions like body positivity and the fat acceptance movement. They are desperate for idiots like you. And here's the truth. They don't have your best interests at heart. They want you to give up like the rest of them have. They want weak people. That's who they need. That's who they thrive on. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Be extinct. Too low. Well, bye bye.